In this video, we examine the use of an open source tool called White Rabbit to perform data profiling for data quality assessment. This tool was first introduced in a previous module to support extraction, transformation, and loading, or ETL, to transform a local data model into a common data model. Here, we use the same output to examine basic data quality dimensions. Briefly, here are the definitions of data quality dimensions, data quality measures, and data quality rules. In this video, we focus on data quality measures. Using the White Rabbit data profiling tool, we will be able to assess some simple qualitative features of the data in the data set. To summarize the role of data profiling, this task provides insights into the basic features of the data in a database or data set. In particular, data profiling tools are optimized to provide insights into what data values exist in the tables and columns in a data set and how often they are used. Because data profiling is a common basic task, there is a huge commercial and open source marketplace for data profiling tools. Google Cloud Platform, which is our technology partner for this class, has an integrated tool called Data Prep that focuses exclusively on this task. Unfortunately, at this time, Data Prep is available only in the United States and therefore is not used for this module. Instead, I have made available in the course materials a copy of the Java-based White Rabbit data profiling tool. White Rabbit is supported by the Observational Health Data Sciences and Informatics, or Odyssey Consortium. We describe its use in detail in a previous module. White Rabbit provides information on every column in a database, which is what we need for data profiling. I provide a copy of White Rabbit's output on a subset of tables from the full MIMIC database in the course materials. White Rabbit's output is an Excel spreadsheet. The first workbook is an overview of all the tables and columns analyzed by White Rabbit. Each subsequent tab is devoted to more detail about each specific table. This view of the overview workbook shows statistics on data types, row counts, and the fraction missing values for every column in every table. The screenshot only shows you columns from the admissions and caregiver tables. Other tables appear below. Focusing on the overview results for the admissions table, we get a closer look at the analysis of each column in that table. One common data quality dimension is conformance to a data model specification. This view provides information on the data types for a column in a table. A data analyst can review these data types to ensure that they match what the common data model specification expects to be used for each column. Density is a data quality dimension focused on the amount of data available for analysis. A temporal density examines the overall amount of data available without regard to any temporal window such as days, months, quarters, or years. The N rows column provides insight into this data quality dimension. Completeness is often referred to by its antonym, data missingness. The fraction empty directly measures missingness in each column of a table. Notice that there is a wide range of missingness across different columns. Many have zero missing values. ED registration time and ED out time, which represents the time when a patient was registered into an emergency room and registered out of that department respectively, have the highest rate of missingness at 
Other fields have varying levels of missingness. In the atemporal data density column for the admissions table, we saw a value of approximately 59,000 rows. This screenshot shows atemporal data density for the lab events table. In this table, we see approximately 28 million rows. It is hard to know if 28 million rows is the right amount, too much, too little, for lab events. We will discuss this issue more later in this video. As we saw in the admissions table, different columns in the lab events table have different rates of missingness from 0% up to 65% missing for the flag variable. Here, you can see the atemporal density values for five mimic tables, admissions, patients, diagnosis ICD, procedures ICD, and prescriptions. Below this table are various calculated ratios, which are not provided by White Rabbit, but were calculated manually by me. The left triplet of ratios is based on a per patient denominator. The right triplet of ratios is based on a per admission denominator. Notice that there are more admissions, 58,976, than there are patients, 46,520. Until now, we have never discussed if the values seen are as expected or acceptable. This question comes from data quality checks, which in turn reflect the expectations of domain experts who understand the nature of these data. Which leads us to the question of determining if the data quality measures we are seeing are expected or are worrisome. This is where data quality rules are used. These rules provided by domain experts or by data users set thresholds for what constitutes a measurement value that needs more examination. These thresholds may change depending on the specific use case. For example, an investigator interested in general trends only, more missing data may be acceptable than for a government official seeking to determine if a medication needs to be pulled from the market. Another set of data quality issues that can be assessed by looking at White Rabbit requires looking at the table-specific drill-down workbooks. In this example, I am showing the details workbook for the diagnosis ICD table. In this zoomed-in view, I show the top 15 values for the ICD-9 code field, along with the number of times this value was used in this field. As mentioned previously, understanding if this is the expected distribution of ICD-9 codes requires expert knowledge. For example, the distribution of diagnoses for pediatric ICU patients would be markedly different than the distribution of adult ICU patients, or even for adult trauma ICU patients. We have shown how the open source data profiling tool, White Rabbit, provides some high level features that can be used for simple data quality assessments. To dig deeper into more complex data quality features, including complex data quality measures, we need a more capable tool. As mentioned, this is a very rich area with an extensive commercial marketplace, including Google's cloud-based data prep service. However, we do not use any commercial tools in this course, leading us to use raw SQL for additional data quality assessments. Another alternative is to implement these types of data quality checks in a variety of programming language such as SQL, R, and Python. Data profiling tools, while not specifically focused on data quality assessment, provides some useful insights into some core data quality dimensions, such as data conformance, 
completeness, and plausibility. These tools provide very global assessments called intrinsic data quality. They do not provide any guidance on the acceptability of the data they profile. To go further, specialized tools are required, of which there is a very large marketplace.